Hallo Deutschlerner! Welcome to the second part of my lesson about German pronunciation in my new Beginner German series. Today we're talking all about German consonant pronunciation. We will only be covering consonants when they act alone. The next video will be about pronunciation of special consonant combinations. This lesson will spread out over the next several videos, but will all be considered the first lesson in what will eventually be a 20-lesson series for A1 German learners. Over the next several videos, you'll learn all you need to know in order to pronounce any German word that you come across. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a video. If you're looking for a more in-depth look into German pronunciation or other German topics, consider taking courses with Lingoda, the online language school. I've been partnering with them for a really long time now, and I can say with confidence that they will help you reach your language learning goals. Click the link in the description and get started learning German with Lingoda today. Over on Patreon, you can get a copy of the video script. In today's case, it'll be a breakdown of the pronunciation tips, an MP3 podcast version of this video, and a worksheet for every video in the series. There's a link in the description for that. The letter B is mostly pronounced as it is in English. At the beginning or the middle of the word, it is pronounced B. For example, beginnen, bear, geben, Graben. When it is the last letter of the word or it is before the letter S, it sounds more like a P. For example, Dieb, Gelb, Lebst, Gibst. Keep in mind that prefixes such as AB or AB sound more like the letter P because it's at the end of the prefix, even though it isn't the end of the entire word, Abbiegen. The letter C is almost always combined with something else. If it is followed by a consonant or a vowel sound that comes from the back of your mouth, it sounds like a K, as it does in English. Kaffee, Clown, Currywurst. This is the same sound used when the C is combined with a K. This sounds exactly like it does in English. Backen, Flecken, Bock. When the letter C is followed by a vowel sound that is made with the front of the mouth, it takes on the sound similar to the TS sound or the German Z. Zirkus, Zirka, Zent. The letter D follows a similar pattern to the letter B. By this I mean that it sounds exactly like the English pronunciation in the front of the word or in the middle. For instance, doch, das, werden, wieder. If it is placed at the end of a word, it takes on the pronunciations more similar to the letter T. Tod, Wand, Schild. There is absolutely nothing special about the letter F, it is always pronounced the same as it is in English. For example, Fisch, Französisch, Neffe, Schiff. If the letter G is at the beginning or the middle of a word, it sounds exactly as it does in English. This includes the combination of N and G. For example, Gott, Grillen, Eng, Bringen, Regenbogen. If the letter G is at the end of a word, it sounds more like the letter K. For example, Tag, Krieg, Flugzeug. Notice that the word Flugzeug has two of these sounds because the first G is at the end of the first word in the compound. Flugzeug. The combination of I and G is very confusing to some German learners because there doesn't seem to be any consistency in the pronunciation. It took me forever to figure it out. If the letters I and G are at the end of a word or before a consonant, they make the sound like the pronunciation of ich. It is also acceptable to say it as ich but the soft variant is more common, which is how I will say it in these examples. König, Ewigkeit, Witzig, 50. It is also acceptable to say König, Ewigkeit, Witzig, 50. Be careful with this rule though, there are a few exceptions. For instance, Signal, when IG is before a vowel, it is pronounced as it would be in the middle of a word. For instance, Heilige, Eagle. The letter G can also sound French when it's used in a word that has French origin. This may be the most difficult category to identify, as I personally don't know which words come from the French. In fact, some of the words that are on my example list, I had no idea they were French until I started researching this video. Garage, Orange. 
ingenieur. You've already seen the letter H as it's used to elongate a vowel sound. For instance, ja, sehen, gehen. In those words, the letter H is silent and only functions to change the vowel. When H is pronounced, it is pronounced the same as it is in English. Held, Gesundheit, Heute. J is almost always pronounced as Y. It sounds more like the English Y than it does the letter J in English. For instance, Ja, Jetzt, Jacke, Mayonnaise. The increasing number of imported English words have made it so that there are also more and more German words that are pronounced as English with German accents. For instance, Job, Jeans, Jeep. French words that include the J are pronounced as the French would pronounce them, which is slightly different from the English J sound. The pronunciation of these J's are actually a combination of the two letters D and J. For instance, journalist, jargon. A K is a K no matter if it's in German or English, if it's combined with other consonants, if it's before a vowel, if it's the end of a word, the middle of a word, or anywhere else, it's always going to be pronounced K. For example, Sekunde. Können, klein, krank, lecker. L is pretty straightforward as well. It sounds just like it does in English. Lüge, liegen, heilen, teil, wild. M sounds like M. Mond, schimmel, atmen, heim. N always sounds the same as it does in English, and this includes when it's combined with a G. Lang, hängen, wein, fahren, danken. P is straightforward as well because it's the same as in English. Post, springen, Gruppe, kaputt, tip. Q is confusing because it sounds like K and V together or K and W in German. It is also combined with the letter U every single time. For instance, quiz. Quittung, bequem. And now for the most complicated one on the list, the letter R. Other YouTubers have dedicated entire videos to this letter. I'm going to try and break it down a little bit shorter in this video. There are two basic sounds that the R can make, and in the end they are both going to come from the back of your throat. The one that sometimes gives the German the stereotype of being a rough language is the consonant R, also known as the guttural R or the rolled R. R. It doesn't have to be Rammstein. It could be Rammstein. If you're trying to replicate this sound, start by clearing your throat. Then elongate that sound. Then add a little bit of your voice behind that. Some people equate it to a softer version of gargling with some voice behind it. You're really trying to get the base of your tongue and the back of your mouth to touch the back part of the roof of your mouth, then make it vibrate a little bit and then add some voice behind it. Let's see some example words to see a more solid version of what I mean. I'll pronounce these words twice instead of just the single time like I did with the other examples to show you that you can choose between harsh and not harsh. Regen, Regen, Rot, Rot, Hören, Hören, Herr, Herr, Dürr, Dürr, Rosen, Rosen. The other R sound is the vocalic R. It sounds more like a vowel than it does a consonant, which is why it's called this. Take the sound that we had for the consonant R and move your tongue just far enough away from the roof of your mouth that it no longer makes that raspy sound. It could also be described as the combination of E and A in German, as this makes a very similar sound, Ea. It is most commonly used at the end of a German word when it ends in ER. It also shows up at the end of a word after a long vowel sound, and in the middle of a word after a long vowel sound, and before another consonant. If that sounds complicated, listen to the following examples and I'll show you which categories they fall into. Bruder, Mutter, Schwester. They end with ER, therefore we say ER. Tor. Mehr, Chor, Bier. After a long vowel sound at the end of a word, we say, uh. 
had. Fad. This is in the middle of a word before a consonant. The letter S has two options when it's used on its own, buzzed or unbuzzed. If it's at the beginning of a word or at the middle of a word on its own, it is pronounced as a Z in English. Zingen, sitzen, reisen, leise. If you double the S anywhere in a word or you use the S at the end of a word on its own, it is pronounced like the hissing snake sound that you're used to in English. Gleis, Glas, Schloss, Wissen. This weird looking dude is basically just two S's shoved together. It's called an S set. It will always make the sound S. If you have a word that uses this sound in the middle of a word or at the end of the word, it is likely that you need an S set. Officially, it is used after a long vowel or a diphthong. This ends up looking confusing when you see it as an infinitive of a verb, but not in other forms of the same verb. If you follow the rules I mentioned earlier, you'll figure it out pretty quickly. Fuß, Fließen, Straße, Beißen. Let's take a look at the verb Beißen. The present tense uses the S set for all of its forms. That's because there is a diphthong before the S set. Ich beiße, du beißt. Er beißt. In the simple past tense, all of the forms take a double S because it's preceded by a short vowel. Ich biss, du bissest, er biss. See? Everything follows the rules. Back to the letters that are a lot easier to figure out. The letter T is always a T. It sounds like T. It's more fun when you add it to other letters and consonants and stuff, but remember today's video is about consonants on their own. In the next video, I'll talk about how it's combined with other things. So for today's video, T says T. For instance, Tag, Teil, Tragen, Raten, Auto, Gut, Rot. V is a bit odd because sometimes it sounds the same as the English, but sometimes it sounds like the letter F in English. If the word is of German origin, it is probably pronounced like F unless it's at the end of a word, in which case it is pronounced like V. If it is a foreign word, it is probably pronounced V. So, here are a few examples as used as a F. Viel, Vogel, Volk, Vater, Feilchen, and now as a V. Vase, Klavier, Verb, Privat, Universität. W is easier because it is always pronounced as the English V sound, V. Nothing complicated about this letter at all, other than it doesn't sound like the English W, W. It's V. Welt, Wolke, Verschwinden, Vorwärts. In random English words involving a W, it's pronounced like the English W, but that's because they're just English words being used by Germans. Wow. Show. If you combine the letters K and S, you end up with the sound that you need for the German X. X. There are pretty much no German words that start with an X. Hexe. Taxi. Flex. You can tell I'm running out of words that use the letter X in German when I use the German word for an angle grinder. The letter Z is like the TS sound at the end of the word hats. It just takes a little bit of practice not to pronounce it like the English Z. Zimmer, Zwischen, Zug, Ziel, Salz, Netz, Plötzlich. Those are all of the consonants in German when they are used on their own. If you want this information broken down into a PDF, I've made that available to my Patreon supporters. If you want to continue learning German with me, click that subscribe button. And if you want a more in-depth lesson in group lessons or one-on-one -on -one lessons, you can click that link in the description for Lingoda. They have fantastic teachers who will help you reach your German learning goals. That's the end of our lesson for today. In the next video, I'll explain how to pronounce German consonant combinations, including the dreaded CH. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss!